Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. You know, over the last few years, I have gotten numerous requests from people wanting a circuit that would provide flicker-free lighting for their cabooses and their passenger cars. You know, even though you've got full power on DCC tracks all the time, uh, when the cars are rolling along, they're still going to, uh, you know, find interruptions in power as a result of dirt or any uneven track or, uh, you know, the same thing is with your locomotives. And that will cause the lights inside to flicker. So how can we go about fixing that problem? Well, actually, it's fairly easy. Um, and I was able to put together a circuit in just a few minutes uh, with spare parts that I had in my, uh, in my parts box here uh, in the basement. So let me go ahead and I'm going to zoom down here onto the workbench and we'll take a look at how you can quickly and easily and inexpensively put together an electronic circuit that will give you uh, f flicker free lighting in your cabooses and passenger cars. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at a circuit that I've got here that you can use uh, to light your cabooses and your passenger cars and that will give you flicker free lighting, okay? So basically, uh, you can see it's a fairly compact design. You know, you can see the size of my finger here in comparison to it. And I've just got it soldered together like this. You can put this inside your caboose or your passenger car. It doesn't matter uh, if it's, you know, built like this or if you put it on a piece of perf board or what, uh, just as long as you put it together in the proper order. And uh, I'm gonna go through how this is all built in a minute. But first, let me show you what all these components are. And there's only one, two, three, four components in this particular device, okay? So the first thing, and the most important part uh, here, uh, is what's called a bridge rectifier. So the bridge rectifier uh, takes AC power and converts it to DC power, which is what you need to uh, operate or your lights inside of your, uh, your, your passenger cars and your cabooses. Okay, so how do you know what's what? Well, right here on the case, and let me zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, right here on the case, you can see there's a little plus sign. Okay, now that indicates that this leg right here that I'm holding and wiggling, that's the positive leg. Okay, 180 degrees across from that right here is the negative leg or the negative lead. So you've got a plus and a minus. And those are very important because, you know, everything with the LEDs is polarized. You have to observe the proper polarity with positive and negative. Okay, so we've got a positive and we've got a negative uh, contact there. The other two wires here and here, these two legs, are what go to your AC power supply. Now, on a DCC layout, it's basically a square wave AC power uh, that you pick up from the tracks. Okay, so as long as these two are connected somehow to the track, and it doesn't matter which track, either way, you're still going to get positive and negative out of these two legs here. Okay, so this can be hooked up to the right rail and the left rail, or vice versa. That could be right rail and that can be left rail. You're still going to get positive and negative always from these. Okay. Now, a bridge rectifier uh, varies. This is a small round one. You know, it's rated at somewhere, I can't remember, one to one and a half amps and probably about 50 volts, something in that realm. This one here is much bigger. As you can see, there's my thumb right there on it. And it's marked plus, minus, and AC here on the package for these terminals. You don't need anything this big. But the, what I wanted to point out is they come in uh, various uh, sizes. So you can get something this big or you can get something that big and all kinds of things in between, you know, depending on your needs. Uh, basically though, something in the one to one and a half uh, to one and a half amps is going to be more than you need for lighting uh, LEDs in a passenger car uh, or a caboose because you're only talking about 20 milliamps for each one of them. Uh, so one amp, that'll give you what, 50? 
Uh, so you really can get by with a very small package. And m most of the, uh, many of the uh, uh, bridge rectifiers available today are small rectangular packages. So that's the first component. The next component that's important, and I'm going to zoom out for these a little bit, uh, are these uh, are, are capacitors. Now these are your standard polarized uh, capacitors. Uh, this one here is a 1000 microfarad capacitor rated at 16 volts. This one here is a 2200 microfarad at 16 volts. And this one here is 4700 microfarads at 25 volts. Now what's the difference? Well, basically that uh, microfarad rating just indicates how much uh, energy is stored in each of these. And that, that will tell you how long, basically, you can keep a light lit once power is removed from the truck. And, you know, you don't need one of these big ones in most cases, okay? In most cases, this guy right here is going to be more than enough simply because you just need the lights to not flicker. So that's all that this needs to do. It only has to be big enough to fill in the gaps when power is, is disrupted momentarily. And that's what this guy will do. And note here that in all of these, we have this bold white stripe printed here, okay? And on that bold white stripe, there are these little negative signs. That indicates that this leg right here is negative, okay? So these are a polarized uh, component, just like an LED is polarized and has a positive and a negative. So on your bridge rectifier then, the positive uh, or the negative wire goes to the negative leg. The positive wire goes to the positive leg. Very straightforward, easy to put together. These things are very inexpensive and um, you know I'll give you a list in the description of all of these components and you can get them you know at all electronics. You can get them from Jameco. You can get them from DigiKey. You can get them from Mauser. And like I said, I'll put that in the description. I also want to point out about the description in the comments. Um, I often post uh, things in those two places after the video comes out because people ask questions and I can address them in the comments and also in the description. So I try to put them in both places. So make sure that after you look at a video, if you're interested in doing something with it, go back and look at the description and the comments. And you can get to the comments on uh, a desktop or a laptop computer. If you're looking at YouTube from there, uh, uh, you can, uh, I, I can do it on my iPhone. I can do it on my iPad. Uh, I assume that it works on Android devices as well with those apps. So, you know, you should be easily able to read the description and the comments on all of those devices. The one thing that I know that I can't do is on my television, I use a Roku and I use the Roku app. And for that, I cannot read the description or the comments on the television. So I have to read them on my iPad. Okay, so let's go on then. We've got those uh, components figured out. Let's look at what else we're going to use. So I've got this 100 ohm resistor. I'm going to put that on the input to one of these AC legs here on the, uh, on, on the bridge rectifier. Now, why am I going to do that? Well, if you don't put a resistor in there, when you first fire up this device, when you first fire up your DCC system, these capacitors are going to suck a lot of current uh, into them, okay, off of the track. And it's very easy for your DCC system to interpret that sudden inrush current as a short. So if you put a, a 100 ohm or 150 ohm resistor on one of these legs here, uh, on the AC legs for your uh, bridge rectifier like this, then that will prevent that uh, uh, sudden uh, inrush of current that is being drawn into the capacitors from creating a short uh, on your layout and shutting your system down. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, another thing that I'm going to use here is this uh, trim pot. Now, I talked about using trim pots with LEDs back in the video I, I did on lighting structures on your model railroad. And uh, if you go back and take a look at that, you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to basically control the lighting uh, uh, of the, uh, or, or the voltage going to the LED. Because, you know, this is basically a variable resistor. And it's got three legs. 
The middle leg is the adjustment leg, and then you've got two outside legs here. And depending on how you hook it up, when you turn this little wheel in the center, the uh, resistance will either increase or decrease. So you can hook one wire to this one and one wire to this one, and it will increase the resistance as you turn this wheel clockwise. If you hook it from here and here, then the resistance will go down as you go clockwise. It will go up as you go counterclockwise. So it's an interesting little component from that respect, and you can test it with a voltmeter uh, set on uh, measuring ohms or uh, resistance, and you can see which uh, combination on the products you buy uh, give you an increasing resistance or a decreasing resistance. Now, I use a 10,000 ohm trim pot instead of a 1,000 one. Why do I use one that large? Well, you'll find that um, having only 1,000 ohms of resistance is not going to be enough to really give you a lot uh, to protect and to adjust the voltage on uh, a lot of LEDs, you know? So if you've got an LED, typically you're going to want to use somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 uh, ohms uh, resistance uh, on that uh, particular LED to get the to get the br brightness down, okay, and get it down into something that's usable. So that's uh, that's all of the components that I used. Okay, we've got uh, our fixed resistor of 100 ohms for an inrush current protector. We've got the variable resistor with the trim pot. We have our uh, bridge rectifier, and we have our capacitor. Okay, so. That's the four components. So let me show you how they go together. So all I've done here is I've taken the uh, bridge rectifier and I've bent these legs like this so that they're widely separated. And you know, if you're gonna just put this together with uh, uh, soldering like I've done, you want them widely separated so that you're not gonna get any shorts, okay? Inadvertently. Okay, then the next thing I've done is I've taken the um, I've taken the capacitor, and here I've got it laid out so that this is positive, that's negative, and I'm going to wire that capacitor to these legs, the plus and the minus, keeping the negative stripe to the negative leg. Okay, so I'm going to put that one on first. Okay, and uh, we'll have those done, and then I'm going to add. the 100 ohm resistor here on one leg of the uh, bridge rectifier, one of the AC legs, to prevent that inrush current problem that I told you about. And then the uh, trim pot, I'm just going to attach this to one of the uh, legs going out to the light. So let me show you that. I'm not going to try to do that on camera and solder it. That will take much too long. Instead, I've got the uh, circuit right here already built for you to look at. Now let's zoom in just a little bit more now. Okay, so as you can see here, as I said, I bent the AC legs out. I've soldered right here that 100 ohm resistor to, the, uh, to that AC leg. Here, these are your plus and your minus wires coming out, the legs, and I've got you know, this is my negative wire from the capacitor going to the negative leg, and this is the positive wire going to the positive leg, okay? Now, I've also attached one of these LED strips that I used in the structure lighting uh, video. I've soldered the positive leg from this LED to the positive output uh, from the bridge rectifier. And then I've taken, the, taken one of these... Uh, little trim pots here, and I've attached the adjustment leg to the negative output wire here on the bridge rectifier, and I've taken this wire, or this output on this foot here, the left one, and that's going to give me an increasing resistance, and attach the negative to it. So let me show you what happens when I turn this on. So I've got my, uh, my power cab set up here to show you this, and going to hook it up. It doesn't matter with the orientation of the wires. Okay, so there is the amount of light that I'm getting right out of this circuit. And what I want to show you is, I'm going to, re I'm going to disconnect 
one of the wires, one of the uh, wires from my uh, from my DCC power supply, and watch what happens. You can see the lights stay on. They're starting to dim now, as we're seeing the amount of of current coming out of there decreasing. So, under normal conditions, when a passenger car uh, or a caboose is rolling down the track, you know, you're not going to see any disruption, any flickering. I mean, I can take that loose like that, and you don't see any change in the brightness of those lights. They're staying the same, okay? Now, as I said, I put the, um, I put this little trim pod on here so I could adjust the voltage going to this uh, lighting fixture. Now, you can see it's very, very bright now. So I'm going to start turning that down. I'm going to increase the resistance. And you can see it dims quite quickly there. It's going on down. So we can go on down quite a bit. And I'm going to bring it back up now. Like that. There seems to be a slight point in here where it suddenly kicks over. That's a nice bright light right there. And let's see how long it takes. Um, I'm going to disconnect one of the wires and uh, we'll go on uh, backup power from the uh, capacitors. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, it's down to practically no light at all. There's just little pinpoints left at all. So, you know, you can go for, you know, four or five seconds uh, based just on the, on the uh, current coming out of this uh, capacitor. So this is going to be, you know, these little strips like this, you can put these inside a passenger car. You can put two of them, one in each end, whatever, however you want to distribute them. You can then adjust the brightness, you know, using this trim pot here so that you're not blasting your uh, passengers. Okay. And as you roll along, if you hit dirty sections or if you hit rough section of track, you're not going to get any flickering at all. Well, you know, the circuit that I gave you, it'll fit in this caboose and it'll fit in passenger cars, you name it, and it'll do a decent job. But I have another video coming up in a week or two, as soon as I get all the parts in from the suppliers, that will actually uh, you know, provide an improvement on the circuit that I just showed you how to build. So keep an eye out on the DCC guy for that circuit. And go ahead, hit the subscribe button down here uh, on the right-hand side lower right hand side of your screen and subscribe to the channel and that way you'll get a notification from uh, YouTube when I do post that video and all the others I post here. So thanks a lot. Uh, have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday with a new one.